What I wanted to talk about today is an add-in for OneNote called OneTastic. If you're not using OneNote, I might recommend that you check it out. It's a free download from Microsoft and it also comes with Office 365 and maybe some of the other Office packages you might already be using. OneNote is a note-taking and organizing application very similar to Evernote. It does have its own structure and its own way of doing things, but it's, a, it's worth checking out as an alternative to Evernote. I'm using it now because Evernote went to a, a pay model if you want to use it on multiple devices. And since I was already paying for an Office 365 subscription, I decided to go ahead and use what I was paying for instead of paying for something else again. So just a really quick rundown on Evernote. You have different notebooks that you can set up and you can set up as many as you want, I think. I currently have a notebook called Comics that's open. This is where I keep some data about my comic book collecting hobby. It's not a whole lot here, just some simple information like the new releases for the coming week. This is my want list section and it has some other pages in here about some things that I'm looking to buy or looking for when I'm going through back issues. This is where I keep some website information. I actually do more of this through bookmarks, but it is there and I've got some pages over here that keep some information. And a few articles that I've found. Again, not using that a whole lot. Mostly I'm just using these two tabs here, the new releases and the want list. But you can add as many sections as you want. So you have notebooks. And within notebooks you have sections. And within sections you have pages. So under my want list section, you can see quite a few pages. I say quite a few, four is a few maybe. And they all hold different information. So that's the basic OneNote setup. And there's some other things that you can add to it by installing OneTastic. So the first thing you want to do is be sure you get the download. When you click on that, you're going to see a couple of options. Go ahead and get OneTastic because OneTastic includes One Calendar. If you find that One Calendar is really all you're interested in, go ahead and download that later if you'd like. Again, it's going to install with OneTastic anyway, but you can get it by yourself. And we'll look at that in a moment. Also be sure that you know what version of OneNote that you're running. There's the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version. Most of the users are going to be running the 32-bit version. That's what they recommend to install even now. I think that has to do with maybe some stability and some compatibility issues with other products and add-ins. But it's worth checking out to be sure that you know what you have. So before you download, open up OneNote, go to File, click account and you'll see the about OneNote area here. Click on that and you'll see what version you have. So I'm actually running the 32-bit version which again is what Microsoft still recommends to install these days. Alright, so we'll go back to OneTastic here. Click the download. I've already inst I've downloaded and installed so I'm not going to do it again. Download and install that application. When you get back you're going to see a couple of new icons. You won't have everything that I have because I have been kind of playing with this but you'll have the one calendar and you should have download macros, edit macros, new macros and the setting button. The first thing we'll look at is the one calendar. One calendar opens up a calendar window that shows when you edited or created a new note. You'll see I did some work yesterday, I've done some work today. Not much else in here because I don't use this notebook very often and when I do I'm really only editing a couple of files. But for somebody who works in OneNote regularly, this could be very useful in finding what notebook you're working or what note you're working in on a certain day if you can't remember exactly where it was stored. So the more you use Evernote, I'm sorry, <laughs> OneNote, I still talk about Evernote a lot, so sometimes I get them mixed up, you'll find this a little bit more useful. But that's the one calendar, and again, you can download that by, by itself if you want to. After that, you'll want to look at the Download Macros button. As you can see, there's quite a lot of information here. Different macros you can download that can help you do all kinds of different things. I'll show you uh, really quickly. There's some image macros, and these are just going to add some functionality. You can actually create macro macros yourself. Most of these have been created um, for you already. If you have one Tastic, we'll click Resize Images. Click install. It's going to install that for us. We'll close that. And now you'll see that I have an image section up here. It's only going to have that one macro in it. 
but it's there. So let's go somewhere where I can find a image. I think this article has one. Yes. So I'm going to select this image, go to resize images, and it's going to give me a dialog box that allows me to adjust the image based on percentage. So we'll do maybe 70% width of the original. And it changed that. You'll also notice that it, depending upon how you do it, it will or will not keep the aspect ratio of the, the original image. You can still kind of play with the image a little bit. I want to just undo all that. And that's one macro. I don't find that one completely useful, but it was a nice way to demonstrate how to install a macro. One I do like, though, is this table of contents macro. I've already installed the uh, table of contents in the current notebook, but you can also see that in the download macros option, there's other ways to add table of contents to your notebooks. So let's take a look at how we would use this. I'm actually going to create a table of contents section. I'm going to move it over to the front of my notebook. I think it's nice to have that table of contents when you first open a notebook. Again, your usage may vary. I'm going to select table of contents and current notebook. I'm going to leave the fast option as the default. I'm going to select the pages option under the scope. This will give me a table of contents with sections and pages. If you just choose sections, it'll only give you the sections, which are these top navigation areas, these tabs here. Go back to pages, and I'm going to update the TOC in current page. You can create a new page if you'd like. I'm going to just leave it in the current page. Click OK, and then basically it created a table of contents for my existing notebook. One thing that I don't like about this, and again, realize that this is just a macro, it's not really a dynamic content generation software. It doesn't update the table of contents if you add a new section. So if I was to create a new section about artists, you'll notice that the table of contents does not have another section here. You can rerun the table of contents options that we had done originally and it will update that, but it's not dynamic. So as you add things to your sections, you'll need to rerun the table of contents macro um, on a regular basis. Another macro that I like, and we'll install that one right now, is the sort. And this will be the sort pages macro. You can see that there's quite a lot of options to add sorting to OneNote, we're going to do sort pages. Install that. And now if I go to a page with that, that has a lot, a section that has a lot of pages, we can move these around just to give you the idea of what's going on here. These are all out of alphabetical order, but I can run the sort option, sort pages, ascending. And now I've got my pages in alphabetical order. It's nice to do this before you run your table of contents because then you can keep everything nice and orderly. And you can do this as many times as you need. Of course, it's, again, it's not dynamic. So as you add pages, you will have to rerun these macros to keep everything sorted up. Not too hard. And we can actually go back to table of contents, rerun that. And it will sort everything out for us. So that's really what OneTastic is. It's, it adds a lot of different content editing and little macros that allow you to work within OneNote. I thought it was pretty cool that it was available to download for free. And so I suggest you check it out.